Our lives are spent in varying degrees of awareness and knowledge and learning about so many things. And hopefully in our lives of faith, you and I grow each year into a deeper understanding and appreciation of God and of his love for us and his plan for us. Today we come to the end of our Christmas season as the completion of our annual celebration of these remarkable events of God being born into the world and then the special feast that we have celebrated over these last two and a half weeks. Two weeks ago, the Feast of the Holy Family, reflecting upon that magnificent community of love that is so natural and human, the family in which God chose to make himself present. We had our New Year's Day veneration of Mary, acknowledging her as the mother of God. Last Sunday's glorious feast of the Epiphany, this manifestation of the child as the eternal son of God. And now today, too, we come to the Jordan River and to our Lord's baptism. And this even more explicit manifestation of who he is and what he desires for us. These are incomparably magnificent events in human history. And hopefully they become more meaningful for us each and every year that we celebrate them. That account that we just heard today in our gospel, Jesus comes to John to be baptized. John first tries to prevent it, saying, I need to be baptized by you. Of course, this is absolutely correct. Jesus does not need to be baptized by John for the call of this conversion and repentance that John the Baptist is preaching points to the baptism that will be offered in Christ. Remember, Jesus is God. He is the source of baptism, not its recipient. But Jesus persists, saying that it is fitting. He is truly God and truly man, and in coming to us, his desire is to fully incorporate himself with us so that he can then save us. Baptism does nothing to him. He is not changed. Rather, he changes the water of the Jordan River, giving it and the water that is in every baptismal font its life-giving power. In baptism, you and I are changed. We become adopted sons of God, joined to Christ, brought into the very Trinitarian life and love of God that is shared among Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Everything is different for us after baptism. We are no longer alone, on our own, so to speak, relegated to a life that is a kind of isolation. No, you and I are given a new identity. We are born again in Christ. He joins himself to us in that sacrament and in all the sacraments of the church, most powerfully here in the Holy Eucharist. And we are recreated so that we can be like him. Our celebrations these last 19 days or so have not just been recollections of past events. They are events that are meant to be actualized in our minds and in our hearts to see how all of this means that you and I are now joined to Christ, given a new life in him. And our purpose here on earth is now to live this out each day. Listen again to the words of the prophet Isaiah in our first reading. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have formed you as a light for the nations. You and I must now live out our baptism by living this truth of who God is how we can know him and love him and serve him so that we might have this life that he wishes to share with us now. And then when this life on earth is over, eternal life with him. This is exactly why Christ was born, to show us the Father, to teach us how to live, to establish his church, to guide us always, and then to suffer and die so that we might have never-ending life. St. Luke, in our second reading from the Acts of the Apostles, says it so clearly that Jesus went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. 
Christmas reminds us that he is with us too. Several years ago, I had the great privilege of leading a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And if any of you have ever been there, and if you ever talk to anybody that has been there, they will say the same thing, that once they have gone there, their appreciation of the scenes and sacred scripture is changed dramatically. I remember like it was yesterday, and it's now over four years ago, standing with our group at the Jordan River, touching that water, blessing them with it, witnessing a large group that was being baptized in the, in the, in the next scene. Christmas is huge. The Son of God has come among us to save us from our sins. And we need to meditate upon this reality. That's why the church gives us these two and a half weeks to do so. And baptism is huge because it is in, in this sacrament that the event of Christmas and Good Friday and Easter Sunday is connected to us, then when we authentically strive to live out this baptismal call, empowered by the sacraments, that we will strive to do good and avoid evil, that we will rise each day in this life that has been begun for us in the waters of baptism, and we will hear those words of our loving Father spoken about us, those words spoken of Jesus in our gospel, that we too are now his beloved sons and daughters with whom he is well pleased.